Once again, it's Greasy Hammer, and welcome to another episode of Mega Base Machines and Oxygen Not Included. In this video, I want to show you how to make molten carbon. And why do I need molten carbon, you might ask? Well, this is because you're going to need it if you want to make lots and lots of tungsten. Check out the link in the description below for that. But now let's have a look at this machine here. This machine produces molten carbon at a rate of roughly 200 kilos per cycle. It takes about 25 cycles to get you 5 tons of molten carbon, which is what you'll need. But before you get to melting any carbon at all, you'll first need to set up three stages. Let me pull up a little overlay here. Okay, here we have three stages that you will need. So stage one in yellow here, this is the pool of magma. Stage two is molten steel. And stage three is molten tungsten here. Now, like I said, stage one uses pool of magma that is used to preheat the refined carbon. And this refined carbon, it just loops on a conveyor loop. Let me show you. Okay. Now you want to make sure that the carbon is preheated to at least 1100 degrees, which is the freezing point of molten steel, but 2000 degrees is ideal. And in this case, we have a conveyor shutoff and a sensor that detects 1900 degrees. And once refined carbon is above this, it will go ahead and pass to the next conveyor belt. Now you'll notice that the magma here is at 1957 degrees Celsius, and this is much hotter than what normally comes out of the magma biome or out of volcanoes. And the reason for this is, this is synthetic magma, and it's being piped by this plumbing here, right here, at over 2000 degrees, and it comes off a little cooler as it warms up this pool. And this is being provided by another plant, which generates magma at 2200 degrees, about 5 kilos per second. And check out the link below to learn more about that. But for now, let's get back to molten carbon. So once again, once the solid carbon gets through here, it goes to the next stage, which is then controlled by this conveyor chute. And this is operated by a cycle sensor. The way I have it set here is the activation period is 2%. And it activates it at 25% into the cycle. And this is, this is pretty convenient because after the autosave, but you can set it to whatever you want, as long as the duration is 2%. This duration gets you 200 kilos per cycle of carbon dropping through here but it will drop all at once and then it will wait for another cycle. So the molten steel in stage two, you're gonna need to get the molten steel in the first place. You currently see it's at over 3,400 degrees and I'd say 3,500 degrees is about ideal. But to get this steel in the first place, what you'll need to do is set up a little steel melter using some aqua tuners. You could also use the iron process. I used it a while ago, but the aqua tuner process is much faster and I made another video about that. So check out the link. And once you have this molten steel, you then go ahead and loop it through. And you can't measure the temperature directly, so what you need to do is have a contactless pump. And then you need to have a liquid thermo sensor. And I have it capped at 3550. And if this is green, then this liquid shutoff will turn on and let the uh, liquid steel pipe into this metal refinery, which is currently using the copper process to heat up additional steel. Now, when you're first setting this up, this liquid steel will be considerably cooler. And what you would need to do is set this first at no higher than 3,300 degrees. And then you can use the steel process. And then once you hit 3,300 degrees, you can ramp it up to 3,450. And then you can go ahead and use the iron process here. And then once you get to 3,450, you can go ahead and ramp this up to 3,550 here and then you can go ahead and use the copper process. And this will just maintain the temperature at that point. So at stage two, once the, car, uh, once the carbon hits the steel here, it's gonna heat up from 2000, or roughly from 2000 to 3500 degrees C before it is removed by this auto sweeper. Now the auto sweeper is operating on another cycle sensor. This one is set to activate for 10%, but what you notice here is the activation time is at 10% into the cycle, which is less than the activation timer of the dropper here by 15%. So essentially, this sweeper sweeps everything up before the next batch, just pretty much just before the next batch of carbon is dropped, which is what you want. And it will, it will then go into this conveyor loader, which goes to the next conveyor belt, to the next chute. Let me show you once again. The chute takes it to stage three, which is molten tungsten, and that's the final stage where molten carbon is made. And this is controlled by cycle sensor and it's set to 2% activation and 25% activation time. 
So it activates at 25% into the cycle, same as this one. It's important that this one and this one are the same. Now you're gonna need to prep the stage three with the molten tungsten in the first place. So what you need to do is bootstrap it off of stage two of steel with a couple of diamond tiles. And then these tiles won't melt. And what you'll do is you'll have a dropper here. This will drop on a timer, tungsten, solid tungsten at room temperature onto this tile and it will melt. And once it melts, you can then use this contactless pump once again to pump the molten tungsten into the metal refinery here. And once you've got at least three tons of molten tungsten, you're set. But ideally, you want to get nine tons of molten tungsten into this pool, meaning three tons per tile. And when you have that, it prevents a little uh, behavior here. It's not a bug. It's just a normal behavior. But what happens is if you have solid carbon here and it melts, it will displace the liquid tungsten to the side and have a tile of liquid carbon here and until a little bit more tungsten gets dropped down and then that tungsten forms a new tile and carbon gets pushed up. You can prevent all this by just having more tungsten in here. So if you have three tons per tile, it will not push it over. Or it will push it over, but then tungsten will push back on its own. So this will maintain carbon in this tile at all times. This carbon is then removed by this contactless pump on another cycle sensor. It's currently set to zero but you just set it to, let's say 2%, and it's set to 50% in the cycle after this cycle timer. And this is because we want to let a lot of carbon sit here in a liquid form. This maintains more heat in this pool in conjunction with the tungsten. And then the solid carbon will be able to get a little bit more heat and it will heat up a bit faster. It makes the whole process go a little bit faster. Now, one thing to note here is the sensor here is set to 4750. And you don't want to have it any higher than 4750 because this may cause vaporization. And you do not want to vaporize tungsten at the atmosphere level here. Because <laughs> everyone here is going to have a really bad day if that happens. So, maximum is 4750. And you pump it into this metal refinery here. And again, it's operated by this liquid shutoff. Same idea as with the steel. Except here now, we're processing gold. And initially you can start with copper and then once it gets hot enough, you just switch to gold. Okay, so now that we talked about melting, let's have a look at the plumbing. And it's important thing here that all the pumps are contactless and they use a passive filter with visco gel as a priming fluid. And this is because we're dealing with extreme temperatures here. Again, I'll post a link below for contactless pumps. And then we also have insulated pipes. Again, everything here has to be made out of insulation. One exception is this recirculating loop with visco gel. This you can make out of whatever, but everything else needs to be made out of insulation using insulated pipes. This is a late game build, so we'll assume you have ample insulation already. So the main thing is if we have a sensor. This gets pumped into this shutoff, and this will then regulate whether or not to open the valve into the metal refinery or just pass it out into the vent. And once this is closed, it'll just simply pass through here over the bridge and into the vent. And it's the same thing here for the tungsten. For this pump right here, this is the initial tungsten supply. So this melts the tungsten and it grabs it and it pumps it through here and then just feeds it into the refinery. It bypasses this uh, sensor here because you know anything that's coming off of here will be well under 3750. And once we, have, uh, once we have tungsten, we then go ahead and have liquid carbon. This liquid carbon is caught by this contactless pump. It's just pumped through this insulation pipe and out down to the next machine. So let's see all this in action. Okay, let's speed this up a little bit. Okay, so you can see we are coming up to the desired point here, at which point the carbon is going to be dropped into the pool of molten steel. Let's have a look. A couple of other things I'll show you is, okay, here we got the molten tungsten. It's going to be pumped out and it will be separated out here. And then this is going to join this other stream into the refinery. And this is how you initially prime this pool. We'll just let, let it go ahead and just pump out. And now as for the carbon, we'll just go ahead and activate this to, let's say, 2%. And here it comes. And we're pumping out molten carbon. And it's going to come across and it will go into another machine, which is where 
we're going to need it. That's the whole point of this machine, is to prepare enough molten carbon for another machine, which is none other than the abyssalite melter that is going to produce over 600 kilos per cycle of tungsten. That's a lot of tungsten. This is a little steel melter I've created. We'll talk about it in another video. And this is all made of insulation because it has to. This is a little synthetic magma plant. I'll talk about it in another video. And here's the machine. Just a quick sneak preview. So we'll just go ahead and fill that up. Let's speed this up a little bit. Point being, it will fill up this container, which is then released into here, and that will fill up this carbon here at 4200 degrees. And I'm going to talk about this machine in another video. But for now, and for now, I'll leave you with this. So in conclusion, we have a three-stage carbon melter that produces molten carbon by first going through magma, then steel, then tungsten. And I think you'll find it very important and useful if you're going to make a lot of tungsten in the abyssalite melter process. Check out that video below. And if you like this video and if you find it helpful, please like it, share and subscribe. Thank you very much.